two different reasons. We're going to do them back to back. First, the old doggy is here with the communication technology update. This is a, a publication I've been doing in cooperation with Technology Future since 1992. The idea was that there was nothing that could be used in a classroom that said, here are the latest developments in consumer electronics and mass media in telephony and satellites. So uh, we started having my students do papers and put them together and it became a very thin book. And then faculty heard about it and said, we want to contribute too. Bottom line uh, was picked up by Focal Press and has been published, as I say, this is the 15th edition. We're in the middle of preparing the 16th edition right now. Uh, those of you who love numbers, uh, you'll want to access, uh, you can access the book, but if you go to the website for the book, chapter two has the history with tables of adoption of all the technologies that we cover in the book, ranging from TV to DVD to telephone to books. Uh, again, if you like numbers, they're out there. And it's, for a book, it's a uh, textbook, it's cheap. I think it's about 50 bucks, so um, anyway. That's why I'm here. Um, what I do is, uh, in this first presentation, I'm going to provide an update on what's going on in the media. Uh, in terms of actual technology itself, there's very little new coming in. The only thing that's really new is 8K and HDR, which are new television technologies, 8K being a technology that has twice the number of pixels as 4K which is really stupid and ridiculous. They were showing it off at Consumer Electronics Show. Even 4K is stupid and ridiculous because the average person watches television from six to 12 feet away from the screen. So when a person's trying to sell you on 4K, they will take you right up to the screen and show you the difference in pixels between your 4K and your HDTV. And you'll say, yeah, I want to get all those extra pixels. But the bottom line is, when you're sitting at home, you're not going to see it. That's why I wanted to point out that uh, last graph that Larry showed with the video on PC. Um, the problem is that most people don't watch television from that 12 to 18 inch distance. People watch that longer distance. There's a psychological separation that comes with the distance. Now, people are increasingly watching TV on other devices on smartphones and tablets, uh, but that's usually more in snippets. Majority of TV is being watched on a big device across the room. So that's where we have to start. We have to realize that where are these devices going and what's going on. So um, the thing that's going on where all the activity is, is there are organizational changes taking place. We, let's look at what's going on. This is just a sample. We knew that uh, many years ago Verizon bought AOL. They've just completed their purchase of Yahoo and their integration and uh, the renaming of Yahoo, which again, abandoning a brand like that, I, I don't know about the How smart that is, nevertheless, they're adding content. Charter bought Time Warner Cable. Not adding content, but adding further distribution. By the way, that was right after Comcast made a very weak attempt to buy Time Warner Cable and were rebuffed for antitrust reasons. Uh, Comcast, of course, uh, before that bought NBC Universal, taking it from a, play, a company that had been a minor, minor player in content to a major player in content and being uh, vertically integrated, as few other companies are. Of course, AT&T uh, had purchased DirecTV and we all know what happened to uh, Uverse after that happened. So uh, we see other deals that are in the works. AT&T has, for the last year, been in the process of buying Time Warner. The question is whether they're going to be allowed to uh, actually complete the sale. The reason for that, of course, uh, there's some concerns whether, given its uh, distribution capabilities, AT&T would limit access to HBO and CNN. Uh, others say it's simply a political thing. Uh, the Trump administration hates CNN. So anything to punish Time Warner is a, that's some people say. I don't have a, oh, I shouldn't say I don't have a, a stake. I have a stake because I own Time Warner stock. Um, 
I just simply respect uh, the media company that does content. Sinclair's buying Tribune TV, again, more consolidation. Uh, perhaps the most important deal, 21st Century Fox, which was a company that was looking to buy just 18 months ago, is now divesting. And the majority of their assets, uh, especially the movie studio, are going over to Disney. Uh, that's a very big change. Not all of it, though. Fox Network, the Fox local TV stations, will stay with 21st Century Fox, which just means it's a smaller company. Those pieces are ready to be picked up. Same thing happened with Time Warner. Time Warner used to be very big. It spun off the cable. It spun off the, print, the publishing assets. It was soon small enough where someone had to acquire them. So that will happen with, 20, with what's left of 21st Century Fox. Uh, the latest deal, this is, uh, uh, if you've been watching the news and the media, the past two weeks it's been reported that Viacom is looking to uh, do a merger with CBS. Um, there will be some kind of deal, whether it's with CBS or not. Viacom is too small. Its financials are too good not to be scooped up uh, when the uh, P.E. ratio is only six. So we know there's been mismanagement. New management will uh, strengthen it. All right. So what does that give us? This is a beautiful graph. If you go to the Recode website, Recode, and just do a search for Media Landscape, it will show you this. Uh, size matters. You can see in terms of revenue, AT or in terms of market cap, AT&T is the biggest, followed by Verizon. We expect that. Companies that are in telephony have always made more money than entertainment companies. In terms of the pure entertainment companies, Comcast and Disney are the biggest ones. Netflix is growing. What's critical to know is Netflix is growing being a company that is only doing one thing, or as Comcast and Disney, for example, are doing dozens, you know, hundreds of things in order to bring in the revenue. Uh, the most important thing, though, in understanding this graph is understanding that the universe is growing, that it's not simply a matter that we have a static number of media organizations that are operating, but rather the amount of time people are spending with media is increasing. The amount of content is being increasing. There were more original hours of television produced in the English language in 2017 than in any year since television was developed. And it gives a real problem. Nobody can watch everything anymore. That, that hurts me. You know, I think, should I accelerate retirement just so I can keep up with Better Call Saul? You know, uh, it's a tough thing. But in an expanding universe, with any industry, anytime the universe expands, the existing companies have to consolidate in order to maintain market share. And there are, or there are antitrust concerns, there are other anti-competitive concerns. But the consolidation is going to continue. The real question is, what's going on? So what I want to do is pull it back and look at all of the specific reasons why the universe is increasing. And these individual reasons are probably going to be more important to you than the big picture of the consolidation. Consolidation is the headline we're going to see. But these 10 things I'm going to show you uh, are going to lead you to the inevitable conclusion, yes, we are going to have more consolidation. So the first thing we have to look at, mobile devices are proliferating. Uh, the tablets are everywhere. The smartphones are everywhere. You know, I remember the day uh, in my graduate class, there was a student laughing strangely, and I walked around, and she was watching Dancing with the Stars on her computer in the middle of class. Uh, that told me something about either her interest in class or my ability to keep her attention. Um, but the idea that the content is so portable when the content is portable, the amount of usage goes up. You saw that clearly on Larry's graph. Uh, the expectation, because the surveys were done and people were asked, uh, as you have more access to the internet, as you use social media more, how is it going to affect your TV use? Every survey said, oh, I'll be watching less TV. And indeed, there are people who predicted less TV use. Well, 
the uh, interesting thing about survey research, if you ask people about anything in TV use, they'll say, oh, that decreases my TV use. Uh, going on a diet? Yes, when I diet, I watch less TV. Buying a new car? Oh, yes, when I get a new car, I watch less. No matter what you say, they say they watch less TV. But if you look at the actual records, the amount of television consumed in Western cultures is going up, especially in the U.S., but not exclusively in the U.S. Second thing, we, are, we have the capability now to provide ultra-targeted content. And this goes for every age group, except perhaps for those who have uh, gray hair and beards. Um, kids, when you look at the content that they're getting on Disney, it is not just targeted to kids. There are shows targeted to 8 to 10-year-olds and 10 to 13-year-olds. Uh, there are shows targeted to people in college. There are programs targeted to people 25 to 34. The ultra-targeted content increases the appeal and people spend a little more time when the content is targeted specifically for them. And you might say, well, why aren't they doing more content for people uh, who are over the age of 55? And the reason is people over the age of 55 already dis consume a disproportionate amount of media and the advertisers have no need to find other ways to reach them and they haven't shown an inclination to spend much more on content. So that's the only audience that is really being left out. Uh, related to the driver two is driver three, targeted advertising. The idea that instead of all of us getting the same message, we're increasingly have, get, being given the capability, especially in streaming, to deliver specific things. I can tell you that I have never bought a Revlon or Clinique product, even though I've seen their commercials. I can also tell you that I have used Lipitor and uh, some other products designed, other pharmaceuticals uh, designed for people of my age. Um, when you can deliver the targeted advertising more effectively, you, ha you can show fewer ads and charge more for the ads that you're showing. Show fewer ads, the amount of media consumption goes up. Uh, autonomous vehicles, we discussed this a little bit yesterday. Um, I have no doubt about this. I think within five years, self-driving cars are going to be a reality. The only question is the model. General Motors is trying to put a fleet on the road next year, uh, but they're going to own the cars. Their idea is if it's completely self-driving, why do you need to have a car? Just whenever you want to go somewhere, summon the vehicle, the vehicle will pick you up, drop you off, and then it will go serve someone else. I mean, when you think about that asset you have, uh, how much time does your car spend just sitting, doing nothing? How important is it to own a car? We have Those are psychological things. Well, don't want to get into that, but I do want to get into the issue that if it takes me 30 minutes in the morning to get to work, uh, how much media can I consume? That's an hour a day of media consumption time that will increase. Again, the media pie is going to get bigger. Uh, number five, improved TV. Uh, Larry talked about 4K. HDR is actually much more important. The 4K, if you get right up to the screen, you can see, but from the ordinary viewing distance, you won't. But HDR, you can. HDR adds dynamic range. So you have more differences, more shades between black and white, more different colors. So you have more accurate reproduction of reality. Uh, that's something that people can see. Again, uh, there's a question, uh, what's the bandwidth going to be? Uh, but we also have something we need to talk about bandwidth in a second. Um, driver number six, over-the-top television. Um, uh, uh, again, Larry alluded to this with the delivery of content uh, over the Internet. All of these companies are delivering content. What's interesting is Netflix has its brand new service. But CBS is delivering all of the regular shows you see on CBS, plus the new Star Trek series. Uh, interestingly, almost no appeal of that new Star Trek series uh, for people under 35. That's a show that's designed, <laughs> looking around the room, for us. Um, and it worked. I'm paying my 10 bucks a month. Um, 
that's you know my my I think my my wife would drop uh, uh, her mobile phone before she dropped it. Yeah, she is. So, and she will live long and prosper. Um, Hulu Plus is giving us recycled content, but I know if I miss an episode of Last Man on Earth, my DVR doesn't catch it because of a football overrun. I just go to Hulu and watch it. Um, Sling is a package of broadcast. So we're delivering the same content. The only place where you're actually getting original conflict, Netflix, Amazon Prime are giving us some original, and CBS has three original series out of what it's doing. So we know, have to realize over-the-top TV, delivering the television signal so you don't have to subscribe to cable, you don't have to subscribe to satellite, you can get it this way, but you're getting the same content you'd get otherwise. Um, this is the big one, ATSC 3.0. Uh, ATSC is the Advanced Television Standards Committee. They're the group that gave us the standard for HDTV that said, instead of having one way to send HDTV, we're going to give you 18 ways. You can choose whether it's 720 lines or 1080. You can choose whether it's interlaced or progressive. You can choose your aspect ratio. Well, ATSC 3.0 goes a step further and gives the capability of delivering 4K TV using compression techniques that were not available 10 years ago. You can deliver it in one television channel. So we're getting more efficient about delivering. There will be some additional demand for bandwidth, but again, the compression is becoming better. Uh, what's really important of all this, I mean, you might say, wow, 4K, 120 frames a second, HDR. No, the big one there, targeted advertising. The last one, the idea that they will deliver three or four ads at once, and you will only see the one that's relevant to you. Again, a much more efficient system that will increase media use. Oh, let's not forget our personal assistants. I love it. I have my little Alexa devices in the house, and there's so many commercials that uh, come on saying, ask your Alexa to... I didn't understand that. God, I love Alexa. Um, but the fact that you have a personal device that you can use to play back any form of audio at any time, and you can use to control your video devices, is going to increase the amount of media you consume. By the way, anybody here have an Alexa? Okay, I don't know if it works with C or other things, but go home and ask Alexa, who's the man? <laughs> Alexa will say, Augie Grant. <laughs> well, at least she says, you the man, when I ask, so I assume. <laughs> All right. Um, this is a, uh, a graph that uh, Helen Mary prepared for the last edition of the update on what the Internet of Things meant in a smart house. When you have these things all over the house, whether they are Alexas, whether they're TVs, whether they're smart refrigerators, if there's a screen and or a speaker, you're going to have media content coming out. So you've got to realize the amount of media people are consuming is going to increase. Uh, number nine, virtual reality and augmented reality. We don't need to say any more about that. It was covered yesterday. It is here. It's a reality. And number 10, 5G is going to give us the ability to deliver things, uh, even more high-quality content on a mobile basis. Bottom line is all of these technologies put together are creating new opportunities for media consumption. Uh, many of these will be subscription-based. Uh, we see that with the over-the-top television, but even more are going to be advertiser-based because advertising-based is the most efficient way to provide content to a large number of people. Uh, so we have to think about what types of consolidation are coming in this big media shuffle. And I've set up there five different models we have to look at with examples of each. First, you can have an old technology buying a new one. We saw this when ESPN bought 538 a couple years ago. It's interesting, by the way, in the last two days, we found out ESPN is looking to divest 538. Um, the most likely uh, uh, buyer will actually be another unit of Disney, which would be ABC News, although I think CNN would love to get their hands on it. Uh, old buying old, 
I don't know how we really qualify to call Comcast old, but comparatively speaking, it is. And NBC Universal, uh, uh, one of the older companies in media, that consolidation has proved very fruitful for uh, uh, that combination. Uh, sometimes the new buys the old. We saw that when Google bought Motorola, said, here are the assets we want, then shed everything they didn't want. Uh, we have the new buying the new. Facebook bought Instagram. So we have examples of what's going on. And then uh, I hate to give this as an example. Sometimes it's a merger. Uh, of the old and new. Uh, we all remember the AOL merger with Time Warner uh, where AOL was the lead partner and ultimately led to a drastic drop off in the valuation of uh, anybody who owned Time Warner stock. Uh, lots of lessons to be learned from studying the history of the mergers over time. But again, we want to look forward. Who is going to be shuffling around? And as we look at the shuffle, obviously we have three patterns we can follow. The first two, vertical integration, where we're looking at a company like um, AT&T that wants to own content as well as owning the pipes into the home, or horizontal, perhaps CBS merging with Viacom, one level of content producing combined with other levels. Um, there's a third, uh, unrelated acquisition. We haven't had waves of this since the 1970s when major media companies were purchased by uh, insurance companies. So Paramount was owned by Gulf Western. Uh, I believe, uh, was it ABC that was owned by ITT for a while? I mean, you, you had a lot of very strange companies coming into media and not managing them very effectively. So I want the focus to be, it's going to be companies that are either trying to go broad or go deep. Um, here's the group, uh, and let's look at this. If we consider that Google is a media company, they are the most valuable media company in the world on the basis of market capitalization. Let's not forget that Google did that with little text ads. It wasn't their rich media, it wasn't the double-click service, it was their ability to deliver text. And if there's one thing I always try to get people to take away, Despite the appeal, the allure of video, text is still the most powerful medium we have because text is much less ambiguous, can communicate so much more clearly. Well, the top four there, Google, Facebook, Apple, and Amazon have been strangely absent from the merger scene. Apple did buy uh, Beats by Dr. Dre a few years ago. Uh, that gave them an extension for their uh, Apple Music. Uh, Facebook bought Instagram, uh, but these are players that could play a much bigger role as companies that are looking for more revenue opportunities. Netflix stands on its own. I couldn't find any company that's really like Netflix. Netflix is a distribution company, but it's not a movie distributor. It's not a TV distributor. It's over the top, and all it does is it distributes its video and makes content. Um, it could be a great target of acquisition if the uh, uh, market cap weren't so high, people didn't believe so much in the future of Netflix. It could be a great purchaser, except it's investing all its money to make programming. So it, again, stands out there alone. Uh, then you have a group of TV stations. Sinclair, which is consolidating. Tegna, which is not. These are ripe for purchase by anyone. Uh, and again, if the market keeps going, uh, somebody's going to pick those up. Uh, Sinclair is a, a, a most interesting case. Again, if you'd like to get in the political side, I don't want to get into that today, but it's a case to watch. 21st Century Fox, I <laughs> put what's left there. Uh, once they have shed the movie studios, once they've shed the, movie, the uh, TV distribution, and they're left with the Fox News Channel and the Fox TV stations, Somebody's going to pick that up. That, that needs to go with something else. CBS has to combine. The only reason it hasn't, uh, Les Moonves has been a great leader, has generated great profits. He won't allow them to merge unless he gets control or he decides to completely step down. Uh, right now, the talk is CBS and Viacom are going to merge again. Um, there's history there. Uh, the next four, these are are great 
wireless providers that uh, with the uh, average revenue per user going down, they're looking for new opportunities. Content is a way to get there. Um, I see them as being possible buyers of any company that provides content. Uh, the next four, cable companies, they have less capital to work with, but still they have to do some consolidation in order to maintain their market share. And the final two, these are the, uh, what I would say, the sweetest ones. Actually, I didn't put Viacom in there. That's why they're all green there. Um, AMC, the combination used to be Lionsgate was a company and Stars they merged uh, in the last year, uh, Viacom. These three are content companies uh, that any company that's in distribution that's looking to uh, uh, acquire content assets, they're the, the prime things that are available. Uh, what's the point? The point is the media universe is expanding and this expanding universe requires consolidation. Uh, for those of us who like to treat it as a uh, uh, spectator sport, it's as much fun as the Super Bowl. Uh, the difference being you don't have to go to Las Vegas to bet on it. You simply have to open up your browser and uh, uh, go to your TD Ameritrade account. And which company, yeah, which company do you want to bet on today? So, all right, so that's the big media shuffle. Uh, any questions, comments? Yes, sir. What I find interesting is that the rise of Bob Hubbard the Post, I mean, are, are they going to go after the newspapers now? Well, remember, when Verizon bought Huffington Post, they were buying AOL. So Huffington, Huffington Post was a unit of AOL. They got TechCrunch as well. So there were a lot of little units that have little marginal revenues that are coming in there. They didn't spin it off because Huffington Post kind of a little bit of a controversial newspaper start, but they're obviously having their slant towards politics. Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking, you know, it's kind of like New York Times or the Post, you know, Washington Post. I would think that the telephone companies would not really let those I, I, I would say it'd be much more likely for them to do the opposite and get more content to say, oh yeah, we have some of that politics, but look, we have sports over here, and they need they need to increase revenue. It's a uh, it's a high margin business. So the, the papers will give them bad revenues. Yeah. Uh, and, and they have the opportunity to make other kind of deals in the long run when they own content companies. Okay. One other question on that, rebranding sure. Verizon. Yeah. You didn't know Verizon 15 years ago. They seem to be successful in changing that name. Yeah, and getting rid of the old Bell Atlantic and, was it 9X? Yeah. But uh, moving from there, I mean, oh, do you have any thoughts on I, I hate to see a company flush brand equity. Um, I, I would argue that the brand equity you had in uh, 9X and Bell Atlantic was not nearly the same. They couldn't keep either old name, so they had to do that. Yahoo was one of the uh, originators of the Internet. Now, that may seem old. Oath doesn't say anything to me. So I can see, you know, uh, spellbound, you know. I can see words that would really bring me in. Oath is not one of them. So uh, that's my personal opinion. Uh, again, if I, if I were really uh, uh, all that great at marketing, I'd probably be running one of those companies and I'd a professor. But in my opinion, uh, there is so much brand equity uh, in names. ESPN is one of them. Um, you know, Disney, there was talk a year ago, Disney would spin off ESPN because the ESPN margins were going down. There's no way that's going to happen. The brand equity is too high, and the potential for building that brand equity into new things is too great. Yes? Of the, of the wireless carriers there, you know, Sprint is kind of in distress. Uh, what, do you, what do you see as their future? They are, they're going to be purchased. My, my get my my guess, and again, I am not an I am not a stock analyst. Um, I see them as being an excellent target for uh, any overseas group that wants to get a foothold in the U.S. So uh, they're going to get purchased by someone. They yeah. almost have to. Yeah, yeah. As as a standalone, they 
There's no growth in, in the, the wire line. They made their attempt by getting into the uh, WiMAX service, and that didn't work out for them. Um, uh, I mean, you could, you, there would be a real interesting merger if Sprint and Netflix were to come together. Because here you have two unrelated companies that could actually find some synergies, um, and each bringing something very different. But my, my guess is it, it will be a lot easier. Uh, I, I see an attempt by one of the U.S. carriers to try and buy them, and I think the Department of Justice would just flatly say no. So, again, my opinion, they don't want fewer than four national carriers in the U.S. Do you see, follow-up to that, I guess, would be, do you see Amazon making any push in the distribution of this? I'm a bad person to ask that question because I didn't see Amazon buying Whole Foods. <laughs> um, Amazon is going to do, you know, Jeff Bezos is going to wake up one morning and say, here is another avenue for growth. Um, yeah, I mean, Amazon, if you, if you look at what they're doing, the heart of Amazon is that backbone. So if Amazon were to uh, say they were to acquire Viacom, they would have those assets, everything Paramount Pictures has. They would own the Star Trek franchise. There are a lot of things uh, that they could put to work there. I see them as being a very logical purchaser, but Bezos is not in the mode to buy content like that. Even when he bought the Washington Post, that wasn't an Amazon purchase. That was a vanity purchase. Again, I, I compliment him. I like that he did it. I think... Uh, uh, the nation is better off having strong financial backing behind what is arguably the second most important newspaper in the country. Um, but, it, and Amazon will make other moves. Uh, they're bringing in too much revenue, they, and it's a lot easier to acquire. The issue is at a certain point, uh, they've got to start showing regular profits, and they've continued to plow everything back into investment.